Here we go, and action! So, very, very happy to the first episode of series two, and he was the first episode of series one, which is Simon Cobb's director, special effects extraordinaire, writes amazing screenplays, <laughs> and he's, um, it's one of those mad things. Some people do an independent feature film, you're on your third. So- Yeah, 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 well, I, actually, uh, I've kind of did two back to back, I don't promote that too much on Facebook, but I've I've made a good start on what will be the second one of my films. I've, I've, they're both written, and uh, I've been doing the special effects on that. And but I'm now I'm really focused on the first one, I'm trying to get that going now. So yes, I crank them out. Oh God, I'm only 25. Look so, at this face. This is filmmaking face. So when, when you were much younger, what was what was the magic moment when you were younger that you thought? I want to make filmmaking my profession, my my career. Well, I, I knew, you know, I knew very early on when things like Planet of the Apes, the TV, the original, you know, I, I remember that. I, I wanted to be part of this world, but I didn't know much about this world. I loved Star Trek and I loved all the Owen Allen stuff from the 60s, you know, Land of the Giants and that and Voice of the Bottom of the Sea. And I, I, I was very much into that world. Um, Six Million Dollar Man came along, well, that was it. But then when Star Wars appeared... Hallelujah. That was it. I saw that in the cinema as uh, you know, I'm sure you did as well. Um, and and I remember seeing the, the way the audience was reaction and i would never seen anything like it. Just the most fantastic experience. So, yeah, and it was that I remember being in the cinema. I mean, you know, I've said this before, but we what I went in the afternoon. I, I was the first one in our local cinema. I queued up for like eight hours to get in. Wow. Um, yeah, I was there. I was first. Me and my brother were first. We yeah. got in. We watched the film. We then hid under the seats when everybody left and we popped up again and, and we watched it twice. I got into terrible trouble that night. But I remember watching the film, hearing all the actions of the kids screaming when Luke appeared, booing when Darth Vader appeared, cheering at his face. And I thought, I want to do that. I want to be part of that world. I want to do that. So that was really when I became very, very, very interested in it and learned, started to learn the craft, um, you know, from you know, my hometown in Basingstoke that had no kind of connection whatsoever with the film. You got you know, Hollywood, Basingstoke. <laughs> exactly, yeah, there you go. You know, you know what it's like. Yeah. So, so, so you saw the film, and when was the first time you picked up a camera? Can you... uh, well, a cine camera, uh, I remember being um, 13. I think I was 13. No, I was, sorry, I'm sorry. I was about 14. I was 14. They had, they had cameras at school, but I'm talking like, you know, Super 8 cine cameras. Uh, I played around with one then, but I, I managed to, got, I got my own on my birthday. My mum, bless her, got me a camera. And I went out and started making making movies. So so that was it, really. And, you know, and um, I, I then we got a projector. because so we had a camera and I couldn't show anything. I'd get them developed. Couldn't look at them. And used to, I used to hold them up. Um, and then eventually I got a projector and suddenly started to seal my work. And um, then... Then I got, um, uh, you know, the little pixing, no pixing. Sorry, I forgot what it's called. Little editor thing, and, yeah. and so I was able. To, I started to cut the films then, um, and yeah, that was kind of it, really. I've still got them now. You know, I was, I was thinking about telecining them at some point and getting them just to see. You know, so a lot, of, obviously, a lot of famous directors like say Steven Spielberg and stuff. That's how they started making little films. And what kind of films were they? Were they sci-fi? Um, well, the first one was, yeah, it was, a, it was a film called Battling Out of Space. <laughs> and and I, I stuck black paper on my wall in my bedroom and splattered it with paint. And then had these big cardboard spaceships and flew them around on strings. And I, oh, wow. I did I didn't have a big bedroom. Um, and at the end of it, the ship blows up. So I set fire to this cardboard <laughs> box in my bedroom and nearly burnt the house. I got into a lot of trouble for that. But, but, but the film, the film's, I mean, you know, it's all out of focus. Terrible, really. But I sent it to Screen Test, which, do you remember Screen Test? It was like a, a show that they had where kids yeah. could get in their films. And they showed a couple of seconds of my, of my oh, film. Oh, amazing. So uh, I was, what, I was was that, what was that like for you and your family at the time? 
Well, I nearly missed it. To be honest, I, didn't know. I just caught it. Um, it was it was great because nobody else saw it. Some of my friends saw it, um, but none of my family did. And it wasn't, you know, you couldn't repeat it or pause it. It was that was it. You had your moment. So, uh, but but I remember at school, um, you know, we had an assembly and um, they talked about it in assembly and that. And I was like the hero. I was. It was such a proud moment, and and it really motivated me to to keep making films. To be honest. And the school actually got behind me and used, would help me as well. And it was good. Yeah, it was really good. So your progression from that and you would think of now, because you're using Unreal Engine, I believe, to create the special effects for your yeah, yeah. new thing of, of internet, Infinite Worlds. Yes, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is there still the young you there thinking of what you did then to what you're doing I, now? You know, I, I, yeah, there's I, still I, the amazing it's, discovery it's, honestly, of something new. It's It's... I can't tell you how amazing it is having this technology at the end of your fingers, being able to, because, you know, you visualise it, you know, in my head, ships are always flying over the heads and, you know, you're kind of in Star Wars land. We've seen that level of effects. And I, in my head, everything I'd made, even, you know, when I was 14, was of that quality. Of course, it's not. But being able to do it now, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And, and what we've done with the new film is we've I've had physical models made. So I've got a garage full of big spaceships, kind of like, you know, know. three foot things. And um, and we've scanned them in into 3D and put lights on them and jazzed them up. And being able to fly these models, it, it's really, really good. Really good. I, I, can't, think, I can't wait for people to see it. It's, it's and cool. thinking of your influences, the Star Wars films, I always remember The Empire Strikes Back when the, you had the, um, it's the Walker things and the Ice Planet. Yeah, yeah. And yes, that yeah. moving along, it sort of special effects moved on. But it, it's amazing if you think back then that I wouldn't say anybody can do it, but the technology is there for independent filmmakers to create, you know, Hollywood style looking effects now. Yeah, it's all free. The software is free. That that's what's bizarre about it. If if you make over if you can shoot a you can make your own, you could be a kid in the bedroom, make your own feature film, sell yeah. it around the world. And, and unless it makes over a million quid, <laughs> yeah. you've got to, they want 5%. But, um, but so you, anyone could be a big sci fi movie director now, which is good in one way, but then it's kind of, it's a bit annoying in the others because I've spent, you know, for 40 years kind of building a career and learning it. And, and then, you know, somebody comes along and, and makes a great little film and, you know, but it, but it, it's, it's easy to do, but it's still, takes a long time and a lot of skill. I wish I could bang them out quickly. It takes me years to make a film, you but, know. But you had amazing success of Evasion Planet Earth. That it, it got shown across the world. It got distributed across the world um, on D DVD disc, online and things. Um, and cin cinema as well. It did quite a bit of cinema. South Korea. I was a hit in South and Japan, I think. I, although I, didn't, I never saw any money for that. I just hastened to add. But yeah. but it, it did uh, it's been over there in cinemas so yeah it's but that, and here, and here, that's here. that experience I mean we we make these films and you want people to see these films say beyond your family and friends you want it to go out to a wider audience how has that been for you in the last few years it's it's a weird it's weird I mean we had lockdown as well which obviously didn't help um, the, it's it's weird you put all this energy into this thing and then off it goes into the world. And and I I went to the, you know we had a little premiere here in here in Birmingham and um and it, it was in the cinemas across the UK and then you know in the papers I was in the Guardian and the Times and that was I was did a bit of TV I got on and it was great but then lockdown happened and so so I didn't really feel yeah. that there was it wasn't that kind of euphoric feeling you think you might get I got uh, to be honest I got a little bit hurt as well because um I, the reviewers were a bit harsh and and you. You make you spend so long making these films. You send it out there, and then I get really snide uh, comments from people in America and all over the world. And then, uh, but also a lot of love. I just have to say that. But that was weird because I I, I found it. I like to be with an audience and judge them. What you know? What didn't they like? What did they like? And you don't. You just kind of getting feedback, which is a bit weird. A bit weird. But but it's been great. And you know what? The odd thing. I, I, we finished it in 2019 it it got it, here in the uk it was late 2019 then early 2020 it got most of the distribution it's still getting distributed now even now i can see that people are watching it and yeah so it's been I'm getting better reviews now i'm seeing a lot nicer reviews so it feels like there's all the people that 
have to review something and you know be very critical of it that, that jumped on board first well, i suppose you know in the world of independent filmmaking it's it's when you put a product out there you are going to get the for and against people and things like that um how is that how was the learning curves you learned from that when you started the journey again mm. for this this new film well what what what's actually happened is the um, distribution has gone on its head in the last four years it's a completely different process now and we stream everything now I mean you, you know so so there are platforms everywhere so part of it is like well do we need distribution in the traditional sense like we used to or uh, it's kind of better to do it yourself in some ways if you can get it into a country via distributor and they can distribute it properly for you and pay you that's great that's the other thing I learned it's full of sharks this business um uh, but uh, there's a lot there's no reason why you can't do a certain amount yourself if it's a low budget film um, it will get out there and, and you can get money. There's a thing called Film Hub, which I've been using in an um, American company. They they market your, they take your film, they market it to streamers. They don't do any public marketing or anything. The streamer then says, oh, we'll like that, we'll have that. Yeah. They then they then put it on the platform and then they market it and sell it. And then Film Hub take 20% and you get 80% of what comes in and you get paid pretty much on the day they get paid. So yeah. it's, which is unheard of because normally it's, it's a, you don't know, but you can see everything. You can get all the kind of information behind it, which is so that's been quite good, and and that's still ticking over, and it's still doing well in America and doing well in Britain. It's still it's still it pops up. It's on all the streaming services here, and I still get paid every six months. Not much, but it you know it does all right. It does okay. So your new film, yes. could you just give us a like a two minute pitch what it's about? Oh God! Okay, or, uh, well, or a little introduction because we put the links in the in this video. Yeah, of course. Well, it's called Of Infinite Worlds, um, and it's uh, it's set in a distant galaxy, um, and uh, it's about this this there's a, there's this solar system of planets, three planets that, that orbit this sun. The sun is unstable and about to go supernova, and and one of the planets gets damaged. There's massive kind of um economic problems where they've got they've got refugee huge refugee crisis and 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 the sun's gonna go so they're, they're in this horrible sort of situation they've got to sort of do something so and they, they they find another planet but it's dangerous to get there so they send this robot they built this robot called Torg who her mission is to go off and sort the planet get it ready so they can start shipping everybody across fairly straightforward stuff however Talk, they give her an emotional chip, like so she can think and feel like it's AI basically. Because she gets there, she looks back and thinks, hang on a second, they're gonna just wreck this world like they have like they've done on their own planet. And so she becomes resistant. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. And of course, she comes back and becomes the enemy, and suddenly you've got this huge kind of conflict oh, of so it's, it's it's yeah, it's good. And there's there's armies in it and holograms and all sorts of things it's all good it's all good there's, there's loads of films that i remember when i was going do you remember when the, the day the earth ended black and white film you mean day the earth stood still day the earth ended and, or is it ended where they all got on a ship or something in the earth oh well, let's go somewhere the, else. Yeah, um, very um, old yeah. black and white thing where, where the ship goes up on the ramp at the end that's it yeah that's yeah. Cool. i probably just spoiled the film there for <laughs> <laughs> you have as a spoiler alert. yeah and it's color it's a color film as well what's it called yeah, the day yeah i know the film it'll come to me yeah. second. but in my yeah. head there's there's loads of influences there but that sounds like a, a great concept and what i've seen you. you filmed online and you've um from what i understand you've already filmed the the set stuff is that right uh yeah we Basically, we raised it. It's very difficult getting money for films. I struggle with it. You know, even though I've got a film that's done all right, it hasn't quite, you know, made enough for the people to get excited and throw more money at me. So uh, what, what I did was I raised a bit uh, over the last couple of years. We built a, a set um, for the spaceship the robot goes off in. So we, we bought a, a, a fantastic actress called Lorena Westin to play uh, Torg. Um, and we shot all of her scenes where she's on the spaceship, she goes off and then she comes back and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So we've shot all of that. Um, so now I'm uh, that, yeah. And 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 the money's the money what has gone into that. And I've also spent, I've spent loads on model making and special effects and all that. So I'm getting a film there. Um, it's just there's just not as much live action yet yet. And that's the next thing. So we've got more sets to build. Most of it is on sets. Um, We've got certain bits where we, we've got an old Ikea 
in Coventry, which is near me, which is empty. And we're building some sets in there and we're using wow. you know, the old escalators and things and yeah. you know, making it look like a sci-fi city and stuff. It's all pretty, pretty grand. So I, know, that, I, I always away. remember when you, um, there was part of Invasion Planet Earth that you would set in a shopping mall and you had loads of extras. Yeah, well, that was my Dawn of the Dead <laughs> influence. Yeah. Um, that was amazing. And there's something online that I've seen that you could be part of the film. What's that about? Because last Invasion Planet Earth, I remember you could be in a pod and this yes. one you can be in a certain scene. Well, it, there, there's various things. You you have to be very inventive to try and come up with ideas. And there's one one perk I've got where you can be in the movie for one frame. Oh, wow. And, um, and it, you know how quickly a frame goes by. But yeah. the idea is that the the... The robot's getting information scanned into her head and she's sort of seeing it and you've got this, all these images flashing up. And one of them could be your mum or your dad or you, you know, um, and in a sort of montage. And I did a bit of that in Invasion. I mean, and you don't really see it. You, you sort of sense it. But the point is, you you know, later on, in 100 years time, you could pause through it and find your the picture of your great grandma. That's the kind of. So, so that's the first thing. The other thing is um, you don't want actors. You can't. It's, it's a kind of bad move to get actors to pay to act in your film that's 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 not done and it gets you in trouble with equity so i don't ever do that however you know people might want to be extras um and it's more about chipping in it's not like you know give us 500 quid and you can stand in the background it's more like everybody puts in 20 quid it means we can shoot this scene and then they can walk around in the background and you know and that's the kind of way i like to do it in invasion we had these great crowd scenes where People were running through the streets of Birmingham with the ships are kind of blasting them. And, and so they let me film in central Birmingham when we, we had crowds running up and down and they loved it. And they, of course, they all got very excited about it and, and backed it. So it was like a collective, the way we made the film. It's really fantastic. So I'm trying to do similar. It's just, this is a slightly different film, but it's it's going to be good. You know, have you seen, uh, you know, you know, George Lucas's film THX 118? Yeah, yeah, do you remember that? There are certain bits in it, they, they won't have bald heads, but where you've got these crowd scenes, uh, it's a bit like that, you know. I don't know if you remember that, but it's a little bit like that we're doing. That's my plan, anyway. So, yeah, and I love it. You're bringing in the wider community, the film community, and it's all about supporting each other. Um, yeah, that's what I try to do. <laughs> In your illustrious journey of filmmaking so far and many years ahead, um, what advice would you give to filmmakers that are watching this that just want to start out? Because you've done the features. Yeah. Would you, from your experience of the last three, three, the one you're working on, what what advice would you give in say the pre-production side of things because that's the important bit getting that right means you've got a more smoother journey of yeah yeah post-production what advice would you give people well the first thing you do is you get you get your script right i know that sounds a bit obvious but you get get your script right um break it up into scenes so you've got for example um you know the manor house front room you know uh the kitchen the the bathroom you and you write you write with all these scenes you know the car park and then what i always do is, is take my script once i've finalized it and everybody's happy with it and it's perfect cut them up each scene out cut each scene out so you've got scene four the kitchen scenes you know and then you put all the kitchen scenes in one pile you put all the um front room scenes in another pile all the basements and then you go right okay so i've got i've got i need to, i've got Four scenes set in the basement. Okay, we know where we're going to film that. That's the other thing. If you can know, have, know where you're going to film it beforehand, it's not to make life easier rather than trying to find it. So then you say, right, okay, so we, what do we need to do in the basement? Well, first of all, he comes downstairs, he has a cup of tea, he does this, they have a chat, they have a fight, da, 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 he leaves. So, you fit, so really think about it. How long is it going to take me to do that? Well, you know, and you go through it like that and you go, right, okay, what am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need my lights. I'm going to need uh, a dripping tap or, I don't know, red carpet. You kind of go through a list. Like, you write yourself a list like that. And then you, um, and I mean, that's it. And then you say, you get your actors, get really good actors. Don't get bad actors. Get actors that can really deliver it on camera and, and do the work for you because that'll make your life a lot easier. Um, and then you just shoot that bit and then you shoot all the front room bits, shoot them all together in, in a try and do them in a day or whatever. And then you, and then when you've got it all, you cop edit it together, and it's like a beautiful jigsaw that comes together. If you if you really thought about every bit, how they walk in, how they go out, um, and you know, give yourself space. If an actor has got a sort of good idea, um, 
do it. If you don't think it's a good idea, then don't do it. But listen to good ideas because sometimes someone comes up with a great idea um, and now ultimately as the director, you always get the credit for it anyway. So, so uh, you know, it's just kind of filtering things like, like that. But uh, be collaborative, be nice. We don't need Blancas on set. I, love, about, I, love I always advice. say, any set that I've been on, laughter helps a scene even if it's a very serious thing you're laughing and you're and then you go into it you you, you relax more a yeah. happy set me. yeah honestly happy set and and really work with your as if you're directing it work with your actors and and know your script so well that you know that at this point he has to be feeling this and then that and then he's got to be upset and and, and you know you've got to know what's going on in, for him or for her because um it's it's very easy to go no you, you and look at the shots you know it's this window you've got a light you've got all this lovely detail the poor old actor's the one that's got to make that real and and ultimately audiences tend to look into the eyes of an actor they don't care about it because can they hear them all right and can they see them all right no you know we all get very excited about these lovely juicy colorful shots which are, are important don't get me wrong it's not i'm not saying it's not important but it's about the actors the acting the what they say how they look and how yeah, they feel exactly. and if you get that if you can get that feeling across your audience will love you for it and if we go back to say like star wars the reason why i mean my perspective people like that film it's it's not just to do with the space passion and the special effects no. emotion and empathy of the characters you're you're following it's this it's the story of everybody isn't it it's the guy yearning for more he yearns for something everything is against him and then, you know, his dreams come true and he gets to save the princess and the empire. I mean, it's, fant it's fantastic. You know, and so it's like someone in a small town that has no chance of getting out, getting out and, and changing the world. It's, it, then that's kind of the story of all of us, really. It's what we all want, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why it works. That's why it and, works. And so it's well. the, they say, the hero's journey. But yeah, exactly. Definitely. Definitely. And I'd really recommend reading the hero's journey as well, or, or the, um, the Michael Wissey version which is sort of filtered down into a very understandable kind of chunks. So the other important thing about film, we talked about the screenplay, we talked about the, the team you, you're directing, is the score. So for this new film, have you got a composer yet? Or? Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm probably going to be working with Ben Simons again, who did Invasion Planet Earth. Um, and I've had a lot of composers writing to me and asking me, and I, I, it's, it's, a, it's tricky. Ben did such a good job on the last film. Um, and, you know, he worked night and day. He gave it 500%. And, and, and I just would be a git if I just went somewhere else. If John Williams came knocking, then I might, you know, I might, oh, sorry, Ben. But, um, but you know, I'm, I'm really big on loyalty. He did a great job. I've got no reason not to use him again. And, you know, he's passionate and the music really is good. So, um, yeah, so it'll be Ben again, I think. Um, I if we can afford to get some instruments, we will. Or some, you know, orchestras and stuff, we will. We'll see. So another bit of advice in your experience is what direction, to, as a director, do you give to a composer for what you want? Do you have an idea? Do you put like a temp score in there to work out how it's pacing with the music? Well, I, you know what? I try not to, but it's very, it's very easy to do. When you're editing, editing's quite a, it can be quite tough. And sometimes you put a bit of music to it and it brings it to life. So I did actually have some very, very certain ideas. Do you remember that scene when um, it's a bit, it, it, it was, it got laughed at a bit because the effects weren't as good. I've jazzed them up now, but the scene where uh, we're on the, they're on the alien planet and Tom, the hero, he runs to the edge and he jumps off the edge of a cliff and lands on the front <laughs> of the spaceship. And the spaceship, I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the film Ants. Um, the, the, do you remember the film Ants? Cartoon Ants. Oh, it's is brilliant. It, is, that had some really serious <laughs> bits of drama. There's, there's the bit with the shoe, right? When he, he's on the shoe and he jumps. Do you remember the two foot feet? Yeah, and yeah, like, no, and, no, yeah no, that's it. And the music goes, <laughs> the music hits a fantastic crescendo there. And, and it, when I first heard it, I was like, whoa. And I, I you know, because I've got this thing, I showed it to Ben. I said, look, I want it like that. And he goes, that's a bloody London Symphony Orchestra. I said, no, 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 just, just the feeling behind it. And he took it on board, and so so the way the kind of when when he leaps, the music kicks in, the real hero theme kicks in. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so so this film, have you got an end date for this film? When when would you um, like? It's all it's all 
always, always, always about money. If if I had, if I could do with a, well, I could do it. I could do with a couple of hundred grand if anyone wants feeling flush. But if I had a hundred grand now in the bank, uh, we'd get the stuff shot. I could he- get a bit of help with the um, special effects, and I'd have it done by Christmas. You know, maybe give or take a few weeks, but around then. But I'm clawing. I mean, you know, people are so supportive of me, and I'm not complaining at all. You know, I've just raised a, another dollar of cash, and I've got a little bit of private investment. It's not quite enough. It's nowhere near enough to finish it, but it would be the next stage. So, you know, raise a bit, shoot a bit, raise a bit, shoot a bit. And in the meantime, keep the effect going, keep the editing going. And it's just it's just like, get the shots, get the shots, get the shots. Brilliant. That's So that, that's where I am at the moment. So I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll be kind of next spring. If I can do it any sooner, I'll, oh, I'll be so happy. <laughs> but, and, and then, but also the second films kind of won't be far behind it. Um, because you know, I'm I'm sort of using most not quite the same cast, but you know, there's a lot of the same cast from both films. And I'm gonna definitely use the sets because we had a, a whole bunch of sets built. Um, when I say sets, they're like flats, you know, it's like a play basically. And I've got them in a storage unit. We get them out, we redress them. So they're gonna be different ships and no one will ever yeah. know. Well, I hope not, no one will ever know. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, and lots of green screen, like green screen everywhere. Christ, so much green screen. But I'm using Unreal Engine to build the kind of what's on the green screen in the background, which has been really helpful, really saved a lot of time or saving a lot of time. I think it's amazing how technology has moved on. I mean, I always remember looking at, I think it was Back to Future 2. Yeah. That you had the three Marty McFly characters, the Marty McFly family in the same yeah. scene. But we can create... You see filmmakers creating that now and the spaceships and stuff, the things we can actually do is... Um... Oh, it's it's mind-blowing. I, I remember hearing Francis Ford Coppola talking about, years ago, about democratising the film industry so anybody can go and make a film. Yeah. I was thinking, no, no that would have never happen, but it, it has it has happened now. So, um, so we need to, as a filmmakers, we need to think about new ways of, A, raising the money and funding them, but also how we get them out and distribute them. And I've been doing some local screens recently. Um, just it's been partly to raise a bit of money for the new film and just to keep me afloat because, you know, with work and stuff. And I, I, I'll do a little screening. Um, I'll advertise it locally, you know, in the local papers, on the internet, and a little bit of leaflet dropping and stuff. And I've been getting good turnouts. And, and mm. but, but rather than, and, and, my, and I give a little talk at the beginning about how we get so, there's so much stuff now, so much, tv and films and it's at our fingertips it kind of loses its value and you know i know it's in our conversation you mentioned all those back to the future films and that which really meant something well this they all get a bit lost everything gets a bit lost now so i give a little talk about the film about what inspired it and then i show it and i noticed at the end of it people are much more receptive because they get it it's your art this is something that you spent your life and passion doing yeah. and we're you're showing it to us and, and it's been great and i've done a few of these and it's it's been very interesting getting it's been lovely seeing your work with an audience as well, which is what I've oh, yeah. that, that's my, and you're looking at their faces and thinking, what are you think? But they see your your creative journey of where you're heading and things. And yeah. just going to that, where can people follow the journey of this new the, the, these new feature films and how can they support you? Uh well, if you oh, thank you very much. Well, um, I've got a website www.ofinfiniteworlds.com you can that's got a little update and i've got the blog on there um and you know follow me on facebook simon cox friend of yours um and on twitter um at simon cox film and you know i'm everywhere i'm everywhere <laughs> it's just there's not i'm, I'm even done as well there's not many filmmakers from none apart from ken loach gareth edwards who else and loads of others actually there's loads of filmmakers from around here but no that i'm the one that hasn't had the huge success that Gareth Edwards has had, who actually lived about two streets down from me, by the way. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Simon. It, it's right. been brilliant to hear about your journey and your new feature films. And um, yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. They're going to be, you're going to love the, the new movies. I'm very excited about them. They will, they're, they're really inspiring and moving and just great fun. I just want to make fun, entertaining films. So. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much.